Well, we're really excited to have Frank Salas with us today. Frank, thank you so much for joining us for this little view bug webinar. And uh, we're going to be talking about a, a contest called I Do. So, you know, Frank is one of the top, one of 50 top photographers in the world. He's a master wedding photographer. And Frank, I've known you since uh, Nick's software days. It must have been 10, 12 years ago. At and, least, yeah, at least, yeah. At least, yes. And you're just one of my favorite people besides being a fantastic wedding photographer. So I'm just thrilled to have you with us today. Yeah, great. Thank you for having me. Okay. Um, Frank, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, um, how you got started into the world of wedding photography? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I started probably not necessarily doing wedding photography out of high school, but of course, like most of us, you know, we start our photography venture, of course, uh, you know, in high school doing photography, but um, believe it or not, that was actually in which I stumbled onto when I was in high school. That was my, um, my senior year. That was my um, summer job. Um, was my cousin, who still today uh, was a wedding photographer. You know, that was my job was to go to his uh, office. And back then, of course, you know, we were doing black and white in color. So I would process black and white film uh, since he knew I was doing that at school. Uh, and then eventually he said, hey, why don't you come on the weekends with us? You can carry our bags, hang out with us, take a few photos. So, so unknowingly, you know, when people mention wedding photography, you know, I, I've done it from day one. I've had no other career, no other job. So right out of high school, I, I started into wedding photography, and it, it was it was a job. It was literally just a job. It wasn't even a, a career or anything other than that. And then, of course, after I finished um, uh, that senior year, then uh, my my 19, uh, gosh, I shouldn't date, date myself, but in the, in 84, I went to Brooks Institute of Photography just to study more, more of photography, and um, my Worked for probably about four different studios there on, and and next thing you know, it's uh, I've had my own studio ever since. So I've always stuck to wedding photography. And I guess just in in a in a short, it's just I just enjoy working with people. So if you're a photographer and you love interaction and and hanging out with a bunch of strangers on a weekend, <laughs> <laughs> then then that's uh, that's usually why they uh, choose me to do that. You know, but uh, so that's why I ended up still doing wedding photography. Oh, that's fantastic. So Frank, you're going to be showing us a few of your own images and what you're looking for in a winning image. We've got this contest called I Do. And so I would imagine we're going to see some engagement and wedding photos. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what you have to show us here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, I've pulled up my, uh, my online proofing page and, and you can clearly see these are all the multiple events we're doing each weekend. So it's, uh, you know, certainly there's just a, each one a gallery of what the wedding couples see, but obviously we, once we have posted some of our favorite ones, you know, on each one, and eventually we'll pick out, you know, of course, like everybody else, pick out their favorites or their or their hero images or their favorite images. But because I do so many of them, you can see it's just it's uh, every weekend we've got images to go through different locations, whether it's uh, what you're looking at, wedding photography or engagements. If I go back here to the engagement series. Let's click on there. You'll see the same thing. We've got numerous engagement sessions. So um, once again, the same thing. We try to pick some of our favorites to uh, highlight the galleries, but we've got tons of them. I mean, it's uh, the beauty of it is that every location is different in most cases. Certainly, I get to go back to some of the same locations, but and especially the wedding photography. Um, you know, we go to different venues, so that's kind of exciting. Is how can we create something unique in, in most of these locations? So. Here was a was a post a gallery. These are just galleries that the couples get to see right afterwards, and then of course, once they make their selections or we put photographs on display, then obviously yeah, then we'll we'll go through and and, and choose photos that we'll present or put online and so on. So that kind of makes it uh, our favorite. But starting with the wedding photography, which even though we actually start with the um, I guess the uh, uh, engagements first, right? Right. <laughs> right? That's where we start at. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, so here we go. Let's go. I'm going to click on this one. So, so these will just show you when I show kind of a quick portfolio um, of our images. I'll just kind of click through here. I mean, certainly these are online items. And so, whether again, you'll see engagement images that are enhanced. And um, a lot of times, of course, I don't show the before and after here because this is what customers are seeing. But in this case, they're kind of getting a, a flavor, I guess, of the style. Um, of course, you know most people will realize that our images obviously have been processed, um, and I show both. We show images that are, you know, just right on the camera. Of course, other than just a little density, but 
you know, we've always tried to do something so it catches our attention. It doesn't look like what they would have done on their iPhone or what their, or the, uh, we always say is the uncle standing behind me at the wedding taking pictures, right? right. Um, you know, he's trying to, he or she's trying to take pictures so we can create something a little bit more dramatic that's kind of a little exciting for us, you know, not just the same traditional photo, but yet, um, again, trying to do something unique to create that. But again, usually I'll just pick out my favorites, you know, from each wedding and, and I'll usually post it either on Facebook or Instagram just to let them share that. In fact, one of the tips that I do, uh, and in fact, I, I didn't bring one up here, but if you go to my Facebook, but I'll actually make the wedding couple a timeline page, usually the week after the wedding or a timeline uh, that goes on Facebook. So when they have their own header, they'll see that uh, maybe anywhere from about eight to 10 images from that event. And I, I'll make that, I guess it's called the timeline, right? right. Um, section there and so it'll have our logo on there so this way you know they're going to quickly put photos of their friends and family that they took right I mean that's the first thing they do especially the day of the wedding they're not waiting for our pictures uh, so I'm like wait a minute I can't have everybody else showing off um, you know right everybody else's pictures I mean they're, they're like well didn't you have like a professional wedding photographer there so so I do that same thing so when I get in on Monday morning to my office when we download the photos um, then that's immediately we'll say you know let's pull out at least a dozen pictures of our favorites and then uh, we'll take an image some unique images like this we'll put them all together and collage them and then make a timeline for them and so this way you're just not emailing the single picture that you see on Facebook but it's something that's gonna sit there for a while right because it's, it's gonna it's not gonna go into a the Facebook feed right how it eventually will fade out right Mm -hmm. It'll right. sit there daily, uh, yeah, on the timeline. So every day, people will, if they log on, they'll see their their photos. So, so that's a little tip that I like to do. I, I like to, you know, take advantage of it. I know that photographers at first uh, were a little apprehensive because they're like, well, you know, they're not paying me for that, or, you know, why should I, you know, again provide that? But, you know, I think if photographers kind of relax in that nature, and, and again, if you're not going to share the pictures, their fa family and friends already have, right? Right. That's so, a great, uh, that's a great marketing tip. I love that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know, all of us photographers are very you know, cautious about our photos, where they go, do they have our watermark? I'm showing you my, my online proofing, which is done through SmugMug. So yeah, these are watermarked, obviously, when the proofing is done. But um, when I do a timeline, I'll certainly do the same thing. I'll put our logo, so it's pretty obvious that they'll see. You can see the the photos, and um, and of course, again. The timeline sits there every day on Facebook, so it's not going to get lost in the feed throughout the day. So I try to provide that, and I don't, again, I don't charge for it. It's just again, if you're not, if we don't provide as a photographer, then like I said, somebody else will, right? Someone else is going to provide that option, and it's usually not the good pictures. So, uh, so anyway, so it's kind of embarrassing, right? <laughs> Gosh. Well, you know, Frank, you must take so many images each weekend if you're doing, you know, several weddings, and you say on Monday yeah, is when Monday you go to post them. them. Yeah. Um, it, does it take you quite a while to do some post-processing on these or have you just kind of nailed it down since you've been doing this for so long it's kind of like presets you've saved and you're kind of going through and just you know quickly updating them yeah that's a good question because I get that all the time you know as you see some of these images that have all been processed but the thing that I do and here's I specify when I do like a Lightroom class um, or, or workflow classes I do mention that is that when I provide the initial photo to the couple which you would see back on this gallery so if I if I basically get out of here for a second let's, let's go back here and move out of this section here let's close this out let's see here, here we go um, basically they're just they're they're just the un, unedited photos other than like when I'm in Lightroom I, if I don't which I don't have open here but um, these images have been processed but when I go back to a gallery let's go back to a normal gallery all the photos have, that we've taken have been, um, you know, we shoot raw format. They've only been um, converted uh, as a JPEG, but they're only converted, I call it like a neutral neutral conversion. Mm -hmm. So I don't do, uh, let me click on one of these galleries for you, if you can see this for you. So this is an actual live gallery from a wedding. So certainly all these images, you know, other than just color correction and uh, color temperature adjustment, you know, we're not doing... Um, any special enhancements if you would right mm -hmm. so I do have presets but the presets that I use um, are normally for um, just for you to uh, other adding exposure if I do things multiple times which is exposure color temperature um, 
uh, a little bit of opening the shadows a little bit. I have at least three or four things that I do in Lightroom. Then I've made my own preset so that if I am going through there, that's all I'm doing. But just just to clarify, I don't go through and do a full process of, again, adding clarity or doing any vignetting or adding extra colors. If you can see, I keep these as neutral as possible, mainly because if the customer is going to order a photo from you, um, you know that's what they're expecting is us for us to do that. So if I take an image like this, this is really all it's done is just other than color temperature, lightening and darkening, that's it. I don't do any special coloring, vignetting, softening, any of that yet until the customer actually orders a photo from me. Then that's kind of what, what each of our customers are being told that if you want that effect, they're always saying, are you going to kind of add your magic there, Frank? I said, yeah. I said, you get that magic two ways, right? That's what I say to them. One, I said, you get that when you actually order a, um, order a photo from me or order an enlargement from us, meaning you know, a, a portrait or for the album. But I don't, um, I don't do that just to randomly go for the internet, right? So I get that, yeah, I get that question all the time. So it's really when they order later on is when they get that, um, you know, when we'll actually do that. So you can see here, same thing. They're all kind of just neutral as, as they go and then later on. And even when they come to the actual photos that I'm showing everybody, which are kind of all the enhanced photos, Usually they're like the single pictures, right, of the bride and groom over the ocean, right? Mm -hmm. These right. images, again, they look great as this, so that's, you're seeing exactly what um, a customer would see. In other words, I don't necessarily try to just sell them on that because what happens is they expect that every time, right? In other words, you're like, are you going to enhance all your pictures like that? <laughs> anybody, anybody ever get that question? <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. It's, it, yeah, so <laughs> that's what you're seeing here. These are all, again, just neutral um, conversions, and then later on when I come back, then if I want to add a little bit of darkening or lightning, um, pull in the sky, maybe like you see here on the, on, through the window, I can do that. Um, if I want to do black and white, add some tonal contrast, whatever, right? I'll certainly do that on, on again, whether it's a portrait they'll order for enlargement or if it goes in their album, but I do have to clarify that, and that's a great tip to make sure that photographer or wedding photographer especially know that you know I'm not doing these crazy enhancements that you saw in the first images until they actually order photos. Very good, good point yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Well Frank you know um, I've seen your images over the years and you have this really wonderful style. Everything about your finished images are so elegant and beautiful and uh, you know the way that you direct the lighting to that really nice kind of processing that you do. Um, can we uh, take a look at some of your finished ones there, just to get an idea of? Yeah, yeah let's go back. I was yeah, I just had somewhere in the beginning. Let's go back to that folder here. This I isolate a couple here, so you can click on a couple here for you. Here we go. Um, so yeah, so and again, I, I should have put a before and after folder in here, but um, but mainly the and that's what I show. Use I will show the customers the before and after. But clearly, when you look at it, you know you'll see the fact that it's either been you know vignetted. Um, you know, my main two tips that I do when I process, just, and I'll share that with you guys, is, um, is two things. And, and number one, that is, is I, I try to maintain detail, especially when we're, when we're working with lots of whites in the dress, the bridal gown, the bride wants to see detail in her dress. You know, obviously there'd be nothing worse than that. But the, here's what I find out when you're processing is that sometimes, and I, and I, give, I wish I could pull up Lightroom and work here with you, I'd show you even more, more stuff. But, but I think you can get what, what I mentioned is, but when you're processing in a global manner, you know, obviously exposure, you know, you're, you're going to expose for the face. You, you pull the slider over, the face looks nice and bright, but then everything else gets lost here. So, you know, thankfully they, and I don't know what version of Lightroom they introduced the, uh, you know, the highlighter, white slider, uh, and the shadow sliders, but that was a miracle to us. You know, in the, in the early days of digital, when the only processing software we had, I remember, was the Canon, and in my world, was the Canon Digital Professional, which really only had a temperature, uh, an exposure slider. Um, can't even remember the other one or two, but we did have no options of, of manipulating just the uh, highlight and the sh shadow areas. So for me, that was kind of devastating because you know the faces look nice and bright, but everything else lost detail, right? You you used a contrast slider, the darks were just gone, right? It was just too dark. White's got to be more brighter. So anyway, so by in them being able to introduce these new features, you know, we can still now maintain detail. But many of my images are double processed because I may do a um, 
and you can do this whether you're in Lightroom or in Photoshop. I do a lot of smart object uh, adjustments where, again, I'll process the initial one maybe for the complexion for the faces, and then maybe the second image will come back and reduce again here, bring down the tonality in the dress, come back in with a sh shadow area, open up in the tuxedo. So there's stuff like that that we'll do. Um, certainly here, same thing with outdoor photos, whether you're using a graduated, you know, a uh, filter in Lightroom for the sky. Um, I think early on too, I, I used to love to, and I, I, of course I still do, but if I have to, but you know, this is the actual sky, but yeah, we used to love to drop in skies, right? Because sometimes here, you'd expose for the, the, uh, the people, and it could, the sky could be two, three stops overexposed, and you certainly can't add a flash this being this distance, so we would have to drop in skies. But, you know, again, if by shooting raw and, uh, and maybe sometimes doing a second exposure, sometimes we could actually merge, you know, those together, right? My favorite of obviously are the faces, you know, I love to do um, selective focusing in the camera, um, certainly softening of that, you know, with the, and, and Lori will remember, right, we, we love the dynamic skin softener. Oh, yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, right, yeah, so, uh, so we love that. I still use that. I love that softening. It's a great feature. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, here's, I'm going to share one major tip, and I, I just did this in my last presentation uh, recently, but, you know, no matter what you do for uh, talking about speed of workflow, if I can just add this tip, you know, no matter what you do for presets or, um, or you know, you can adjust quickly or whatever, any uh, uh, presets you buy to do that, you can get any of those. But the number one thing that has helped me to speed up workflow and create, you know, some images, and especially when you're doing a volume, is that your exposure has to be perfect. I mean, the, the, there's nothing in the world that's going to speed up your workflow other than a, uh, a perfect exposed image. And so I'm a big advocate of... Um, light meters, you know, and mainly because I don't have time to look at the screen uh, and make the adjustments. You know, I'm at a wedding, it's quick, um, I have to pull out my meter, I make an adjustment, set the camera, fire off, you know, X number of photos and then move on. So I don't have time to um, auto exposure, I mean the uh, uh, white balance there, so I keep it on auto white, ex uh, white balance so that I can do it later in the conversion. But, um, but if there's one major, major thing I mentioned to people, you've got to have a perfect exposure. I mean, if you're expecting your dynamic range to work properly, doesn't matter what camera you're using. Uh, if you want to keep the noise level down, you want to keep detail and highlights. You, you you know you've got to start with a perfect exposure. I mean, that to me that's the number one tip that you'll ever hear in your whole life here with photography. <laughs> if you get great exposures, um, then everything else will be accordingly. So, um, but in my enhancements here, you can see. You know, I can uh, darken skies again, but I'm still trying to maintain details uh, and throughout this whole process, and um, and that's what that's what the key is. You see that? You look at the dress. I've got detail there. The dark suit's got detail. The sky has detail. So um, one other quick thing is, and, and what what is discouraging is that people like the beautiful contrast in some of these images. Well, you know, you can't add contrast when your whites are overexposed and your blacks are are totally go gone, right? There's no detail because contrast slider is going to do that exactly what it's going to do. In other words, it's going to en en enhance the whites. So if it's already blown out, the contrast slider is going to give you more blown out. I guess that's a good way to put it. If, you, if your shadow is already dark and you add the contrast slider, it just becomes more dark. So when you bring in detail, and this is the best tip here you, you should know, if you have detail and you make the image flat during the initial conversion, then that contrast slider will be your best friend. That's my secret slider that adds a punch to these images. But the, sli the people don't like contrast sliders because the de things start blowing out. But if you hold detail in advance, the picture is going to be flat when you start um, doing that. But when you do finally keep detail, then use your contrast slider. You're like, oh my God, there's some snap or really good detail in the photo. And that was due to having the proper detail in the photo. So, so that's kind of the secret for me is to, um, is to keep detail on images. That's my first and foremost. Certainly I did mention that actually what was first was the exposure, right? So that's certainly my favorite. Get great exposures. Then when you process, you're going to be faster. Um, and then when you do a manual adjustment, I'll mention one more quick thing. 
your manual exposure in your camera, you know, the same thing. If you shoot those next 20 images or 50 images on a manual exposure basis, your workflow is going to be even faster. So clearly you can see I have a passion for trying to get that right in the camera. But, um, but I, I always do, um, again, I just try to do something that's just beyond the limit. I know we've all sit in the computer and it's like, okay, I've darkened and lightened it, but what else can I do to get people to say, wait a minute, well, how did this thing happen, right? Right, right? So that's kind of been my style, just to get some of the tension when they look at your images. Well, that, that's a great tip, and I think many people might forget that importance of getting it right out of the camera first, and that saves a lot of time down the road, too, when you go to post-process. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I, and I know there's different types of photography, right? So we, you know, certainly if you're doing uh, some type of photography where you have the time to look at the back of the screen and make your adjustments, you know, that's that's works great too. But in the, in the world of the wedding photography, I don't have time to look at the screen all day and make adjustments. And uh, there was, I think, one time last year that I left my meter in one of my other camera bags. I have probably three camera bags that I kind of uh, work out of, meaning if I do an engagement shoot, I'll take one bag. If I do a, a wedding, I take a couple other bags. So I have to leave my meter in one. And I, and when I got to the wedding, I, couldn't, I didn't have my meter. So I found myself looking at the back of the screen all day. Mm. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, how do other photographers do this? I mean, I get it that you, know, you can become an expert in, in the aperture priority and plus and minus all day long. But I realize that I, I spend more time trying to be creative and, and try to get some unique photos. I never have to look at the back of my screen. So I just said to myself at that moment, it's like, wow, how do photographers do this if they have to look at the screen all day long? Because they're losing focus uh, and inspiration because you're just sitting there, you know, as I say, babysitting the uh, settings all day. That's true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> so, Frank, you're going to be looking technically at some of these images, you know, to make sure that yeah. the exposure is correct. Um, let's talk about the artistic, you know, capturing that moment yeah. because you are so spot on good about capturing moments. Uh, can you give a tip or some kind of encouragement yeah. to, to those yeah, who are trying to do this? Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, absolutely. And like I said, I obviously I know I'm, I'm in the wedding world, and, I, and but if you're a journalistic world as well, you know, and, and there's, of course, you know, we, we get to cheat, you know, like in this image that you're seeing, you know, we, I say we myself, my other photographer, but I'm able to maybe certain cases, you know, have the bride sit in the chair and, and where I want her to sit. I've already metered the window light here, so I can have her say, okay, sit down, put your dress here, pretend that you're putting your shoe on, or she's actually putting her shoe on, look out the window, look down. So that's, of course, one part of we, we get to direct, right? But, uh, but other than that, I think that it's even if you take on a journalistic uh, style, you know, your image, you want to, is the expression the telling the story, is, is the, the scenery of the people, is there interaction in the photo? So, you know, that's something you acquire. And, um, and I, I don't necessarily think I have a folder of it, but, you know, when you look at Im images in a, in a journalistic approach, is you're looking for a, a story. Now, that's kind of just a blanket statement because I I've heard that before and it, it took me years to really figure out how to do that. But you know, a lot of times when you look at something happening in reality, you know, you're enjoying the moment. Well, in photography, you don't have time to enjoy the moment because you have to click the shutter when you see that moment happening. If that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to train yourself to capture the moment and don't enjoy the moment because everybody else enjoys it by looking at the right expressions or a moment in time things are happening but in a journalistic style whatever you capture the the person viewing it should be able to see what the story is about and so again I'm able to guide it if I have to I mean obviously we it's I don't know what majority of it's you know 60 50 or whatever I mean meaning we're or 60 40 in other words we're 40 percent we've captured and 60 percent we've directed but Nevertheless, it's just like a film in a movie. I mean, uh, you know, you, we all look, look at films, and so I don't think it's a bad thing to direct. Uh, all, most films, I think all films are directed. In fact, many of them have multiple takes, I think we all can relate to, right? Mm -hmm. And you look at a film and you say, oh, my God, this, it was dramatic. It was, it was emotional. It was, uh, it was captured. But you didn't see that they did take one, take two, take three, et cetera, right? So same with, with this is I may be able to take an image, um, have the couple, I don't get all those takes many times, 
and many times I don't need to do that because things are just unfolding as I capture. But if I have to ask them to look at each other, hold hands, give each other a kiss, you're just creating that moment and then I love to add the environment. So it really I almost look at myself as a landscape photographer a lot of times. So if you eliminate the couple and you look at the environment, that's just a, maybe an extra added thing that I like to do as well. I'm going to give close-ups for their mom and dads, you know, for smiling at the camera. But I truly enjoy so that when I do the photos, um, it's not just, you know, only just post photos. I try to get something that tells a story from every, every uh, image that I capture. But, um, but that's the fun of it. That's what creates your style, that you're not just doing, um, you know, the same thing time and time, you know, for each event. So Frank, why don't you show us um, a couple images, what you're looking for in a winning image, maybe uh, some examples of your own uh, work. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When, when I do, like when I enter for whether it's print competition or um, obviously we're looking for that great photograph is that, you know, I always look for a couple of things. One, you know, I'm looking for um, great expressions, you know, and, and a lot of times, you know, we're always asked, how come they're not smiling or so on? You know, we don't, you know, if they can smile with the eyes, you know, maybe that's going to be uh, what they're smiling at. But I look for a great lighting in a photograph, a direction of light. You know, I try not to sh photograph everything with a flash on camera. Um, and again, even composition-wise, you can see images that I do that I try to create compositions that are not the norm. You know, certainly I have the picture here. I could have certainly just centered her right in the middle, had her smile, right, look in the camera. It's a simple photo. But remember, as a director, right, you're the photographer, but as a good director of it, you, you have to let them know where the eyes are supposed to look. Do they keep the lips together? Do they smile? Do they tip their head? So all these features are running through your mind as you're capturing the image. But when I look at a photograph, I want to be able to have some just, again, some compelling view of it so that, again, it's not the normal vision. And I think by great lighting and composition, um, those are the strong points. Color in this image you can see is beautiful with colors, of course. You're showing that off. Uh, and that's why I enjoyed the processing before, right? So that I was able to, um, to, to process these images so that, again, do a vignetting on it so maybe it's dark in the edges, uh, soften the skin tone, and create these different looks. Um, and again, if you're, here's another image where same thing here. It doesn't have to be like uh, looking in the camera. This one could certainly be where, you know, it's, she's framed by the window. So, you know, because I have her looking down, I've set up the dress. Same thing here. I've been created like she's actually physically walking like I captured her in time. But, you know, you don't realize there's probably like five, six people behind me, right? I've got the maid of honor. I've got some of the groomsmen behind me. Right? I've got the coordinator behind me. So they're all saying, hey, you've got five minutes. Take this picture. We're out, right? So I think wedding photographers, you've got to give them a lot of credit. You know, we don't have much time at these events. Uh, you really don't. I mean, I, I think if there's one thing that we should be praised for is truly the uh, the minutes that we don't have at a wedding because, you know, I look at pictures like this, you know, I've got literally 60 seconds and then I've got to bring the groom in there. I've got to keep going. But I think if you if you want to create some unique images, you know, look at basically, uh, you know, doing you do your typical close-ups, you do your smiling at the camera, but then you're like, you know, how can I incorporate the surroundings uh, in an image, and that's kind of what I like to do. So you'll kind of see a pattern in that in, in the photography that I do is that I try to create, um, you know, a little bit of everything, but I just back up. I just keep backing up, backing up, backing up, if that's a good way to put it. I kneel down, you know, I'm on my knees, I'm standing tall, I'm doing horizontal, I'm doing vertical. Um, I may do some with strobes, some without strobes. Um, I'll do them smiling, not smiling. Um, if you use practice your posing, you're going to do different effects, some traditional ones. So yeah, you can keep going on and on to create that. Here I have them laying on the ground, you know, and I know, you know, you'll say, wait a minute, do couples want to do that? Well, you know, when they see you're being creative, they're, they're going to go with it. So same thing, I try to capture um, all angles of it. Um, here, same thing where it's a relationship. So I'm the one suggesting close your eyes you know, look at me, close your eyes, look at each other. I mean, so you have to guide the whole thing uh, through that. But, um, and then, of course, the processing, that's just the fun part, right? I mean, that's the bonus afterwards when you've captured great images all together. Um, and again, some of these images, is, you know, I don't, I think right now in, in the processing world, I mean, it's all preference, obviously. I mean, I, 
I used to do a lot of uh, you know like uh, vignetting and filtering and you know and I still do some of that but maybe some of them be a little bit more natural here where maybe I may just enhance colors um, to tell a story maybe adding light to it so that again darken the edges just to create always a center of attention to go to your subject matter so yeah I just that's I, it's for me I just you know it, it's fun to be able to do something beyond the, the normal um, just so that your customers are happy and you're going to get something unique but again the, a good photographer in this case you're going to direct um, you know the, at the right time and you're going to direct when you're not supposed to right meaning so there's two two types of coverages at these type of events but for me I love color you can see that I love the coloring I love the expressions the mood um, so that everything goes together the, the groom has his, his hand in his pocket uh, not just dangling here, right? Many times we take pictures, like where does the guy's hand go, right? Where does her flowers go? Where do her eyes go? Do they touch nose or do they not? I mean, uh, where's the light coming from? So these are things, you know, again, that I wish it was one tip that says, hey, just turn the camera on and go for it. But, you know, if you're trying to get to a higher level um, of your photography, you know, it's got to be something that, you know, again, the person standing next to you with their own camera, you know, can't do. And so that's, been always been my passion to say you know what what can I create that you know your neighbor or your the, the clients behind you or the guests are not going to produce and so that's my inspiration just beautiful this is a true example of um, why you are a master photographer and you can tell that you've got such a passion for this I mean your images are not just you know wedding images they're pieces of fine art I mean they're absolutely beautiful and I've Thank always you. admired your work and just absolutely beautiful Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Frank. That was such a treat to see your beautiful images and get some inspiration and tips from you as well. Some really fine tips. I hope everybody jots down or keeps in their memory bank. So uh, this is really wonderful. If you want to take a look, please uh, go to franksalis.com. And Frank, you know, you're a keynote speaker. You speak all over. Are you going to be at PPE, for instance? You have plans uh, for New York? Yeah, I won't be at PPA. I mean, I just finished uh, Photoshop World in Las Vegas, so that was a great show, and so I'm looking forward to, uh, I guess our next shows will be in the uh, beginning of the year at WPPI. We'll start off the year again. So. Yeah, so if you ever see Frank, tell him hi. <laughs> you're, you're, you're awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. And we Thank look forward Lord. to all of your uh, wonderful images, and, uh, and Frank's going to you know, pick some of his favorites, so we'll be excited to see how, how that comes about. But uh, Thanks again, Frank, and thanks yeah, everyone for watching. Yeah, I love watching. it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.